Greetings. In this video, we're going to disclose how immense role fascia plays in peripheral nerve blocks. And if you get the tips and tricks from this video, you'll be able to transition to much safer and more successful practice of peripheral nerve blocks. If you've ever watched or had a chance to download Nysora's nerve block app, you would see that in that app and in all the teaching of Nysora, we define a nerve block as an injection into the space that contains a nerve. In other words, if these are the two tissue fascias and it's a muscle above and muscle below, and these are the fascia layers that envelop a nerve, then the nerve block is basically simply an injection into that space. It's not an injection perineurally, subepineurally, intraneurally, but in that space that contains a nerve. And when that happens, then the nerve moves away from the local anesthetic and away from the needle to safety. But penetrating that fascia to inject the local anesthetic can be treacherous, and let's see why. Here we see an example of reverse ultrasound anatomy that Nysora uses in all of its workshops and Neuro Black App and all of its teaching materials. And basically the animation allows you to see how the needle interacts with the fascial sheets. In this particular example, you can see how it takes a certain amount of force for that needle to penetrate the fascial layer. And indeed, fascia is much tougher than the layer that is underneath it. So when the needle breaches the fascia, the needle has a tendency to enter into the tissue below the fascia violently. Let's watch this. So the needle breaches the fascia and at some point in time, the fascia gives in. Now, when that happens, this is really when the needle can easily lodge into a vessel or one of the nerve roots or any nerve that we're trying to access. This is why when we are about to breach the fascia, we really need to slow things down. As the needle now approaches the brachial plexus sheet, and at some point in time, the sheet has to give. And when that happens, you can actually get a violent entry of the needle into the brachial plexus sheath with a resultant injury to one of the roots or nerves that we're trying to block. Now, we often advocate use of nerve stimulation because if you had a nerve stimulator connected to your needle and this needle nerve contact, you may be actually able to get a distal motor response, which would alert you to the fact that the needle is on the nerve just in case you missed it on ultrasound, which happens all the time. But when the needle enters, it does so violently. It is this situation here where you can really get into an intraneural needle placement as the needle makes its way into the space. Interfascial injection is where the injection needs to occur in order to block the nerve. It's not perineural, intraneural, subepineural, but inside the fascial sheet that contains the nerve. Secondly, it's very important to follow very closely the needle fascial sheet interaction and avoid violent entry of the needle into the space that contains the nerve. If you use a nerve stimulator like we do, you may be able to observe a distal motor response that would alert you to the fact that needle is just about to penetrate the fascia when it is almost in contact with the nerve that you would like to block. And therefore it provides you another level of safety. I hope you enjoyed watching. And if you do, please make sure that you subscribe and never miss the future videos. And you will find a lot more material we just talked about with animation, illustrations as such in a sort of nerve block app. Until next time.